this is Kathy from Mummy Travels and I'm back with more of my travel tips. I did my first set of what to pack when you're traveling with kids tips so if you didn't see that check out the playlist or have a look through my videos and you'll see those. These are more of my do not travel without these if you have children. Um, and first of all I'm going to look at activity things to do. Activity books are brilliant. These are probably for um, slightly older preschoolers rather than toddlers. There's some more ideas for toddlers in the other video. But we have things like these activity books. Um, if you saw the first one, you know I'm a massive fan of Usborne. Those have brilliant things for, for travelling. Uh, so this is the, the little children's range. It's really good with sort of preschoolers. And you have loads of things. You have you have puzzles, you have spot the difference, you have drawing, you have colouring, you have all manner of things. And they do a couple of different variations on that as well. So here's a couple of those. We've got this one is a wipe clean, comes with a special pen so you can slightly shine, you can draw in it and wipe it off. It's a bit mixed because you end up with pen all over your small person um, and the pen ran out. But you know, you can get more pens and uh, it does mean it lasts a bit longer. Same, same with these, these come in a little box and these are actually proving really useful because we went out one time with some friends um, whose twins are a couple of years older than my daughter and they took some of the more complicated ones while she was doing the simpler ones. So these, these really last. 100 things to do uh, with little children on a journey. What else, born again. Then, I mean, there's a whole variety of those. You can get lots of themed ones, so things to do on holiday. That's uh, really nice, actually, because you can do stuff like spotting, um, things as you go around. This one from Lonely Planet 2 called Spot the Lot, which has got, uh, it's almost like you can play as a game and you find stuff that's in airports and so on. This was a good one as well when my daughter was younger, my giant fairy tale activity book, because, um, again, it seems a bit more manageable for a, a preschooler. Um, and it ties into... Yeah, the, the fairy tales they know, I mean, the Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf, for example. So, and this is my new addition to Activity Things. It's where you've got sort of the black um, and a little scratchy stick. And there you go. You scratch it off to make a picture. This is dinosaurs, which are one of my daughter's favourite things. One of the things I haven't factored in is you get loads of little bits of black ink everywhere. But what can you do? There's always seems to be a little bit of a mess, so... It's quite good for car journeys as well if you're not worried about um, your own car as much as other people's um, homes or planes or trains and so on. This next one was a bit of a surprise hit. I was trying to find things for my daughter to do in the car when we did our road trip around California because she'll quite often get travel sick um, if she watches anything. Um, and we'd play games and we'd listen to music and have audiobooks and so on, but this was a nice extra. And these are lacing pictures. You can get various sort of sewing kits and so on. But these are nice and simple because they've got these, these nice, bright, thick laces. And then there's your picture, and you just lace the one through the other. So again, they're really easy to stick into a bag. They had a bit of an unintended side effect, which was, was brilliant. When my daughter got bored of lacing, she decided these were all snakes. Uh, and just started making up stories about all the snakes and what they got up to. Um, which I have to say were very inventive. These snakes have an interesting life. But so that, you know, it also shows that the littlest thing, sometimes you put it in and kids will just make what they want from it. Then my last tip is things to read. I mean, books, magazines are an obvious one. Uh, magazines are brilliant because I normally get a couple, one for the way out, one for the way back. You quite often get those little plastic whatevers with. I tend to go for the ones with more stickers, my daughter's a massive Octonauts fan, so we usually get an Octonauts one. It was brilliant before our last trip because they had little, like a little shark and things. She took those in the swimming pool with her, so did double duty. Um, or you can get, let's see, what have I got here? Uh, National Geographic Traveller Kids has one. Millions and millions of CBeebies ones that I find they tend to work, but you know, you can find something for whatever your kids are interested in. And then I hide one for the way back as well. Um, so which can also be a good guarantee of good behaviour on the flight. The other thing I would say about books, and this is particularly for toddlers, is make them a bit interactive. Sitting there and reading a story is lovely, but it doesn't take very long to read most toddler stories. So things like these, this is Fox's Socks by Julia Donaldson, these lift the flaps. And those are absolutely fantastic because it will just double the amount of time that you can spend because they'll be looking for things. Even when they know the story backwards, um, they still like to, to lift the flaps. 
then as you get older you can find slightly more complicated ones we've got a dinosaur fact one that you can read and she's learning at the same time um, alternatively and I wouldn't recommend this on a plane but once you actually get there this does double duty um, as a jigsaw so oops we've got a couple of these hang on that's absolutely falling out but you can see with the one that fell out um, that's how the jigsaw goes together and it's also the monkey puzzle book um, so you pack one and you get two things and the last bit in this and again this is probably for when they're a bit older is story cards you can get these all over the place too we picked these up on holiday one time you pick however many cards and make up a story to go around it so it started off my daughter would pick the cards for me I would have to come up with a story for her um, I'm going to say little kids are generally quite forgiving of mad plots or no satisfactory conclusion. So if you're sitting there thinking, I can't make up stories, you really can as long as it relates to the pictures. They're just happy to have you tell them a story. Now she's getting older, she wants to make up her own as well. So that's quite fun. We can do that together. And obviously these are, these are tiny. These will go in anything. And as long as you've got a bit of space to spread them out, so they're maybe not quite so good on a plane unless you can convince them to have short stories with just a couple of cards then they're also really good to pack. I'm going to be back with some more travel tips including uh, some more of my what to pack suggestions. Have a look out uh, for the playlist um, which should be below or obviously subscribe um, to see all my videos as they come. I'll be back with more soon.